Hello and welcome to the discussion and solution session of JEE Advance 2015 Paper 2 Physics. Here I am to discuss code 0 and now let's begin the discussion with the section 1 portion of this question paper also begins with integer type as what was code 0 paper 1 which had also begun with integer type questions and it has any answers which lies between 0 to 9 both inclusive. The first question is from rotational motion and it has been taken from the topic moment of inertia. These are two spheres A and B of identical radius. However, the mass density of these two spheres are different and the functions of their densities are given respectively. But one thing is noteworthy that the density only depends on r, it does not depend on theta. It means at a distance r you revolve for any angle theta the value of density is not going to change. And i is the moment of inertia along the diameter and we need to calculate i b upon i a. 2 by 5 m r square the formula will not be valid because the sphere is not uniform. However, if you see there is one uniformity in this variation. At a distance small r if I go and construct a hollow sphere, you could see throughout the surface of the hollow sphere the density is constant. So, this solid sphere can be thought to be made up of number of hollow spheres one jacketed over other and each hollow sphere in itself is uniform. So, the technique would be the small moment of inertia for a hollow sphere would be 2 by 3 mass which would be density into volume 4 pi r square dr. So, 2 by 3 m r square would be the moment of inertia of this elementary hollow sphere. If we integrate with suitable limit that would be the moment of inertia the limit with 0 to capital R. Now, it is fairly a simple question individually in both the cases you got to put the value of rho a and rho b and you would get respective moment of inertia upon calculation i b upon i a would come out to be 6 by 10 and the required answer was the value of n in this particular format. So, therefore, question number 1 will have correct option as 6. Now, let us move to question number 2. Question number 2 is regarding coherent waves and their superposition. Four harmonic waves of equal frequencies and equal intensities have phase angles 0, pi by 3, 2 pi by 3 and pi. When they are superimposed, the intensity of resultant is n i naught. If you closely observe, the ones having phase angles 0 and pi would offset. So, now effectively all you have to do is that superimpose two waves having the phase angle pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3, but the phase difference if I denote by phi would be pi by 3 or that is 60 degree. And now all I am remain is to add two coherent waves and the formula corresponding to this is there and this would be of course I naught plus I naught plus 2 I naught cos 60 would be half and that comes out to be 3 I naught. Well, we had to compare with n i naught. So, quite obviously the coefficient would be 3 and therefore the correct answer for question number 2 would be 3. Now, let us move on for question number 3. Question number 3 is from radioactivity where A is denoting activity and that is minus dn by dt quite known formula where n is the number of active nuclei at any time t and r is a new term which is rate of change of activity. 
it says two radioactive sources p having mean life tau and q having mean life 2 tau have same activity at t equals to 0. Their rates of change of activity at this time which is twice the mean life are rp and rq and we got to find the ratio. Well, we know that activity is a naught e raised to the power minus lambda t and this time that would be lambda 1 a naught would remain same since initial activity is same. R is minus dA by dt which finally results to a naught lambda 1 e raised to the power minus of lambda 1 t. So, quite obviously R p by R q would be lambda p by lambda q e raised to the power minus lambda p t by e raised to the power minus lambda q t and lambda p by lambda q would of course be in the inverse ratio of their mean life lambda equals to 1 by tau and this thing would be e raised to the power minus 1 by tau at time 2 tau that has been asked. So, e raised to the power minus 1 by 2 tau into 2 tau. So, this would come out to be 2 e raised to the power minus 2 divided by e raised to the power minus 1 which is 2 by e and now comparing with the given format the value of n has to be 2. So, the correct answer for question number 3 would be 2. Now, let us move on for question number 4. Question number 4 is from ray optics and it has been very beautifully set from the topic prism. The angle of incidence is 60 degree and angle of emergence is theta. And here the refractive index is denoted by n and n is varied correspondingly theta would also change. Now it says for n equals to root 3 at a definite value of refractive index the value of emergent angle is 60 degree. And at that situation d theta by dn is m and we need to calculate the value of m. In other words, we need to calculate the value of d theta by dn. But this one is a very very special case. When n is root 3, you see the value of theta is 60 degree and if you notice this is satisfying the condition of minimum deviation. And this is 60 degree, this is 60 degree. Now, at this particular situation, let us call this as r and you would get that 1 sin 60 that is root 3 by 2 using Snell's law here is n sin of r and we get r as 30 degree. But you should keep in mind this is at this specific situation. But if r is 30 degree, this r is also 30 degree, but that will help us to calculate angle of prism which is 60 degree and that is constant that does not change with time. So, with this particular specific condition we could calculate the angle of prism. And now let us try to calculate d theta by dn. This is r1, this is r2. Now, out here we will get n sin r2 is 1 sin theta. If I differentiate with respect to n that would be 1 sin r2 first function derivative of second plus second function derivative of first would be equals to cos theta d theta by dn. Let us call that as equation number 1. Similarly, we know that r1 plus r2 is equal to a and dr1 by dn will be equals to minus of dr2 by dn that will be equation number 2. And finally, this angle is fixed. So, root 3 by 2 is n sin r1. So, differentiating that would be 0 is n cos r 1 dr 1 by dn plus 
sine r1 that would be equation number three now we have these three conditions and now you can put the value of theta as 60 degree and n as root 3 at this specific situation we can calculate d theta by dn when when you calculate the value would come out to be 2 and the correct answer for this would be 2 the value of m so question number 4 will have correct option as 2 now let's go to question number 5 